Hello and welcome back to On the Workbench. Today we're taking a look at the OEM Tools AirVac Coolant Refiller. This is a very recent product released, I believe, in about May of 2017. It's made in Taiwan, and I've not seen anyone do any reviews on this. It's very highly rated on Amazon currently. I'll put a link below to this. And I got this as a means to help me refill uh, my vehicle. So I've got a couple of cooling system flushes coming up, and I thought it'd be good to have one of these. I didn't have these around. And uh, let's take a look and see what you get here. So the whole point of these is to ensure that you have no air in your cooling system after you flush your radiator and all the cooling system out by using uh, what's known as a Venturi effect. And so if you look at what we get in this case, you can see we've got a nice blow molded case that actually has a proper hinge. And so I'll be sure to keep this around. So we've got a set of instructions. We'll come back to the instructions here in a little bit. And then we've got our tool over here. So we first of all, we got a set of adapters. We'll go through those in a moment as well. So we've got, here is the main guts of the tool. This end here goes into the radiator with the attachments. I'll go through in a second here. And then we've got this collector here. You can see where this actually comes with a uh, zip tie on it. We'll cut that off. And this goes into your bucket of coolant to be able to refill it after you put a vacuum on your cooling system. And then on top here, we've got a vacuum nozzle. Now, vacuum nozzles are known to be very sensitive. And so what we're going to do with this for how this works is over here, there's an, a quick connect here that's designed for a vacuum, which is what this piece is. Let me go ahead and click this into place here. And so then this piece right here on one end here is a loose piece of hose, and so that's going to be the blow-by. And then over here, there's a red cap, and this gets removed, and then you add an appropriate air fitting. It includes one uh, quarter-inch air fitting. Now, if you've got a different uh, style coupler at your shop or in your garage, you can go ahead and substitute that out. If you use a color-coded ones or whatever it is, substitute that out. But they do include one, and this is just a standard industrial one, but this is not the standard automotive-style fitting. I actually was expecting the automotive fitting instead of this one, but all my tools run on this, so I'm fine. But your mileage may vary, and there is no thread tape or sealant for installing this. You'd want to obviously add that before you screw that in. It's a nice touch that they even seal this off with a red cap. And so by putting the shop air in here, that then comes out this tube on the other side, that's going to create a vacuum effect coming from this way, which is going to then suck the air out of your cooling system, then blow the cooling system air out here to hold a vacuum. And since the cooling system operates under pressure anyway, that's typical for it. And you want to get that down to about minus 20 to minus 25 uh, on this gauge. And then after you get that under a vacuum, then you'd really open this valve up here, because it's already open right now, but you'd open it up to then suck the coolant back in, and then undoing the pressure here and that suction will bring that in so that everything will happen and you have no airlocks in your radiator or any part of your coolant system and then it'll just be able to do a better job of your coolant uh, flush and fill or other bit of cooling system clean. And so then over here on the assembly here you can turn the shop air on and off separate from controlling the, the assembly connection here. And the guide goes through and walks through the steps of this here. I'll, put out a, I'll be putting out a video later showing this tool in action, but I just want to walk through the tool by itself in this video. When I get the other videos posted, you'll see a link to that below. And so these are plastic valves here, which these were metal as opposed to plastic, but these look like a durable, like a nylon type plastic. I don't see any casting marks on them to be able to look at that specifically, but it is nice on top. You can see there is a uh, mark here, so you know whether it's uh, open like that or going across to indicate that the valve is closed because there's going to be these three valves here that's going to control it. The main competitor to this one is the Airlift Vac, which is what I, I strongly considered getting. That's the one that's rebranded, by, I believe, by Snap-on and Matt Coe and a few others. It's about $40 more than this one at the time I'm making this video. But this seemed to have about the same valve configuration. There's some cheaper ones out there that have a lot more valves or a completely different design. But this came remarkably close to it for about $40 less. And the reviews I'd found on Amazon at the time of buying this uh, were very favorable towards this, so I thought I'll give this a chance. Now one thing just by looking at this and how these tools work, you may actually need a longer blow-by tube 
This comes already with a sealed fitting here, but you could undo that clipping there or add just an extra uh, inline valve here to extend the length of this. So you got enough length when this is on your radiator cap that this can go down into another bucket or a pail so that any extra residual coolant that comes out the vacuum line here uh, is not actually uh, just dropped on the ground arbitrarily. Because the last thing, especially if you've got pets around, you don't want coolant at all mixing with your pets. And I'm a dog owner and I don't want uh, my dog to ever come in contact with engine coolant. That's a very deadly combination uh, for pets who are more apt to eat it. I mean, I think as humans, we're not, we're not going to do that. But coolant is attractive and very deadly to pets. And so then in the Ziploc bag here, we've got some adapters. And so we've got a cone adapter. This is kind of the universal adapter. And then we've got several other sizes. Depending upon the size of the expansion tank that you're putting this on or the radiator. So there's four, five of these plus the cone. So that's going to give us a nice variety of options. And then these are going to plug into, let me move the camera here. So each of these adapters can connect and just slide onto the bottom of this here. This is the side that goes in. Now let me just show this here. So there's a nice knob here that you screw. I mean, without no adapters on, you can see as you screw down, this is actually going to tighten this up. So you get a nice seal. And then when you have the appropriate size adapters, you can properly seal. I see these are numbered here. This one's marked 42 millimeters. This one is marked 40 millimeters. This one is marked 31 millimeters, uh, 45 millimeters, 35 millimeters, and the cone is unmarked. Obviously, the cone can go to a variety of sizes. And I don't actually see a size of what's on here. It's unclear to me if you could use this with another specific dedicated adapter or this could just snap right on if you had the proper adapter that would screw on to the radiator fitting. I know OEM Tools does sell a few of those adapters and a few other of those floating around from other manufacturers. I can't really tell if that would work or not, but these other adapters here should involve or should cover just about all of your options. And you don't have to worry about having various screw type assemblies for different types of vehicles, especially with the cone. The other thing that this comes with is the instruction guide and looking in the instructions here. The instructions here are entirely in English. I'm actually kind of surprised there's not another Spanish one uh, variation of this here. It's got lots of warnings and instructions, but it boils down to a couple bits of operation here. One of the details that's missing from this is the actual working pressure for what your shop air should be if you've got a regulator for what to set it at. Um, so if you're able to figure that out, go ahead and put it in the comments below. As of now, I would assume we're looking at probably about between 90 and 120 PSI. It'd also be nice to have a recommendation for the CFMs of your compressor. Because of the Venturi effect blowing through a lot of air, you might want a decent sized compressor to be able to keep up with the CFMs, but maybe it's no big deal. And then here's a parts list that shows exactly what's included and a nice diagram. When you read the instructions, it talks about opening the valves by number in the proper sequence. So that was pretty easy to understand uh, how this works. So I hope you enjoyed the look at this tool. I'll put a link to it below on Amazon if you're interested in checking this out yourself. I'll be doing a video or two uh, coming up in the next couple days. It'll probably be another week or two before I get those posted here on the channel uh, showing this tool in action. But I just want to do a really quick unboxing of this and show this tool um, because I'm excited to see it and I thought other people might be interested in seeing this too. So have a great day. Bye.